Hello once again, thank you for joining me on this channel. Internal antenna tuners. Most radio transceivers now have got an internal antenna tuner. But there is a difference between an internal antenna tuner and an external one. At least there is in most cases. For a start, the internal antenna tuner will only match an unbalanced antenna, so it's great for coax cable, but you can't really match an N-fed wire, and you shouldn't even try it really, it cause all sorts of problems. And there's limitations. Very often the internal antenna tuner doesn't seem to cope with all antennas. Perhaps yours is one of those, perhaps it's not. So is there a difference between internal antenna tuners? And could we, for example, use it for things other than a conventional coax, say, dipole? I recently did a video covering the uh, doublet antenna. Now the doublet antenna, generally speaking, needs an external antenna tuner. Because the internal antenna tuners of most transceivers just don't have the capability, they don't have the, the breadth to cover some of the reactances and impedances presented. And of course you do need a balanced feed. Well you can easily achieve that. All you've got to do is to have a length of coax cable with a ballon on the end and then feed your balanced line from that point back to the transceiver. And I mentioned in that video that you could just have a, a, a ballon just outside the window, terminate your open wire feed onto the ballon and then tag a coax feed from the ballon into the radio room. And with a bit of luck it won't be longer than about five, five or ten feet, say around about three meters. But wouldn't it be nice if you could feed that coax line straight, straight into your transceiver? Be great, wouldn't it? You wouldn't need, wouldn't need an external antenna tuner. So I wondered what the capability was of an internal antenna tuner. Now I've got a pretty basic station. I've got an ICOM IC7300. It's probably the bulk standard HF transceiver that a lot of you use. It's, as I say, it's nothing special. It is rather special actually. It was when it was introduced. SDR transceiver at a reasonable price, internal antenna tuner. And it's also got something called an emergency tuner or an emergency setting. So what I set out to do in this video was to see what the capabilities of the internal antenna tuner was of the ICOM 7300 and compare it with other transceivers. Now, I've only got a limited number of transceivers to play around with here, but I'm willing to bet that the internal ATU of the ICOM IC7300 is not unlike the one in the Yaesu FT DX10 or the 101. It probably has the same capability, although I'm not sure that any of them have an emergency setting. Anyway, let me show you what I found. First of all, let me show you the ICOM IC7300. Now this is feeding a short length of coax cable to a ballon just outside the radio room and then that ballon is connected to a long length of balance line, a 450 ohm ladder line. I would guess it's around about 50, 60 feet and that then goes to a doublet and the overall length of the doublet is just under 70 feet. It's nothing special, it's all random. But let me show you what I achieved. First of all on the ICOM 7300. 28 megahertz on the 7300 and that matches 24 megahertz and that matches 21 megahertz and we have a match again there 18 megahertz 14 megahertz Again, we get a match. 10 megahertz. Uh, we have a problem there, no match on 10 megahertz. 7 megahertz. Again, no match. 
3.5 again no match and on 160 meters 1.8 megahertz again no match if we go into the settings on the 7300 we press other and down here we've got something which says emergency we can select emergency tuner it tells us that we've got to reset it now having reset it to the emergency tuner we go on to 10 megahertz and we now get a match now on the 7 megahertz band and again we get a match now we go on to the 80 meter band 3.7 megahertz and we don't get a match here and we go on to 160 meters uh, 1.9 megahertz and again no match so the emergency tuner does help us it gives us a match on the 10 megahertz and 7 megahertz band but even with the emergency tuner set in on i can't get a match on 8 meters or 160 meters well that was interesting wasn't it the icon didn't do too badly the emergency setting certainly made a difference, but it did struggle a bit. And certainly there was no way it was going to operate on the 80 metre or 160 metre band. And you might say, well, you wouldn't expect it to, would you, with a doublet that's 70 foot long? It's unlikely. Well, it was worth the try, wasn't it? But then I thought, let me try the G90. Now, the Zego G90 has a, had a lot of publicity. And a lot of those that operate it and uh, own them say how well it performs the internal antenna tuner. So I thought, let's give it a go. Let's set it head to head with the ICOM 7300 and see how it fares. So let's take a look at the G90. On the G90, 28 megahertz. get a match 24 megahertz slower but we get a match 21 megahertz a match 18 megahertz a match 14 megahertz ten megahertz yep a match seven megahertz A match. 80 meters, 3.7. A match. And finally, the 160 meter band, 1.9 uh, megahertz. So we got a match on all bands. The G90 is slower in achieving a match. It just seems to be working slower, but it doesn't uh, fail to get a match on any of the bands. Well, the G90 may be a bit slow in tuning compared with the Icon, but it certainly managed all the bands. It may struggle a bit, but it got there, and it got there on all bands from 10 metres through to 160 metres, which is quite an achievement to, a to actually match a doublet on 160 metres that's only 70 foot long, the top section. It's quite an achievement. I haven't yet tried it on the air, but it was pumping RF down the balance line, so I'd be interested to see how it works. 
So finally, let me look at the Ellicroft KX2. I've got a KX2. In fact, this KX2 was one of the first ever built by Ellicroft. I collected it from their stand in Dayton, Ohio. I can't remember when it was now. It was a good few years ago. That is fitted with an internal antenna tuner. So let me show you how the KX2 fared. The KX2 on 10 metres. Good a match. 24 megahertz. Yep. 21 megahertz. Match. 18 megahertz. Yep. 14 megahertz. Yep. 10 megahertz. Yep. 7 megahertz. Yep. Well, it's struggling there. I think it was about 3.3, 3, so it didn't quite get a match. And it doesn't cover 160 metres on transmit, so the KX2 will actually resonate the antenna, or match the antenna on all bands, although on 80 metres it did struggle a bit and it didn't get, a, uh, by any means, a perfect match. Well, the KX2 didn't do too badly, did it? It managed to match all bands, although on the 80 metre band it did struggle a bit and it didn't achieve a particularly good match. Three to one, well, it will probably generate some power, but uh, it was struggling a bit. The G90 was way ahead. It, certainly in terms of the ICOM 7300. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a 100 watt G90? That would certainly cause a stir in the ham radio market. Well, perhaps we'll have to wait a little while for that. I know no more than you do, but certainly a 100 watt G90 would be a very interesting transceiver. So there we are. It is possible to have a doublet, feed it with a short length of kites cable to a ballon, and then that ballon connects to your 450 ohm or balance line. It means to say you don't need an external antenna tuner. Now, I have just tested my system here. It's 70 foot top section. It's a, around about 50 foot of balance line and a bit of coax cable. If I varied the lengths, probably things would change. But at least the comparison between a mainline transceiver like the 7300 and compare it with a G90, which is certainly a much more budget, uh, budgeted price transceiver, it's an interesting comparison. Now, have to bear in mind, of course, that the G90 is only 20 watts. The Ellicroft KX2 is only 12 watts, I think they get out of it now. Whereas the ICOM 7300 is 100 watts, although when it's on emergency setting, it's down to 50 watts. So there is a little bit of leeway that you have to allow for the fact that if you've got a higher power transceiver, then maybe the ATU is not going to have the same flexibility as it would do in a lower power transceiver. There we are. G90, great little radio, matches a doublet on all bands from 10 metres to 160 metres. Give it a try. Anyway, I hope it's been interesting this comparison. As usual, thank you for your support in this video and on this channel, much appreciated. Don't forget, um, all these transceivers we do sell uh, from our Portsmouth facility, so go on our website and take a look. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Once again, thanks for your support, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.